Now, this week, we mark the 50th anniversary of the first moon landing. The Apollo 11 mission and those that followed allowed us to examine the makeup of another celestial body. 50 years later, and with Earth's growing appetite for raw materials, the race is on to find valuable minerals on the moon and beyond. Just days ago, the Japanese space probe Hayabusa 2 landed on the asteroid Ryugu, over 300 million kilometers from Earth. It's there to take samples from beneath the surface and bring them back home. Together with France and Germany, the Japanese Space Agency aims to find out what the asteroid is made of and if there might be any valuable raw materials hidden within. The project is a world first with multi-sampling, two landings and a collection of undersurface samples. It's awesome. The US space agency NASA is also examining an asteroid with its OSIRIS-REx probe. It's taking samples of the rock to find out what it's made of and hopefully gain some insight into how the Earth was formed. NASA has also been looking for rare resources on the moon for years. The rugged crater moonscape could conceal valuable treasures. Metals such as gold, platinum, iridium and helium-3 gas have all been detected there. Now it's trying to figure out how to break down these raw materials and transport them to Earth. And for more, I'm joined by Professor Phil Bland, the director of Curtin Space Science and Technology Centre in Perth, Australia, which is down under, far away from here. Good to have you with us. A couple of years ago, a space probe landed on a comet. Now we're chasing asteroids to mine for minerals. That sounds like science fiction. How real is it? I think it, uh, it's becoming much more real, actually, uh, just over the last few years than I ever thought it would be. Uh, it's interesting, we're on both the, uh, the Hayabusa and OSIRIS-REx missions. It's great to be part of that. Um, there's, there's private companies involved in this now and also most major space agencies. And what do we hope to find on an asteroid that we can't mine here on Earth? Well, uh, it's, I mean, there's a kind of a couple of flavours here to this. Um, we can find, as you said in your piece, uh, those heavy metals like iridium and, uh, and, 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 uh, and rare metal, you know, platinum and things like that. Um, but in a way, it's kind of the support industries that we're interested in. And for those, you need uh, fuel and you need water. Uh, and we can get that from places like ice um, on the moon. All right, but uh, uh, the moon isn't right uh, next door. Asteroids certainly aren't. All such missions are very costly. How big a business proposition is space mining then? Uh, I think so. Uh, so NASA and Chinese Space Agency and ESA all have a program to go back to the moon over the next few years. Uh, if you can get fuel and water there versus carrying it all the way, that's a really big deal. So in terms of, you know, you save a huge amount of money for every kilo you can find there uh, versus what you can bring here. So it's a huge support for those missions. And of course, you, I mean, you mentioned it, there's a lot of cooperation going on uh, when it comes to space missions uh, between nations like the United States and Europe. Uh, once you get there, how do you determine the mining rights on an extraterrestrial object? It's difficult enough here on Earth. That's an excellent question. Actually, right now, um, there are no uh, mining rights. So, uh, so you can't legally um, make money mining asteroids and bring it back to Earth. Uh, if you use that material uh, to make fuel, I think that's OK. But there's some very old treaties in there, and, and those need to change before this becomes an industry. All right. Uh, Professor Phil Bland, the, the director of uh, Curtin Space Science and Technology Centre in Perth, Australia. Thank you so much for your time and your insights.